Hi there, everybody. So, hello. Is it sorry, Tag Taggy Tails? How, how are you doing? I hope you're okay. Just wait for a few more people to join, and then I will dive into my review on Tales of the T Tales from the Tardis. Quite looking forward to doing this actual review. So, how how is everybody doing, eh? Yeah, I love the way I have done the figure display, to be honest with you all. So, welcome to my review on Doctor Who Tales of the TARDIS and other Doctor Who content as well. Like, we've had so much big Doctor Who news with the 60th anniversary, with the tenant specials, and of course, with other things going on with Shruti Gatwa's era as well. So... Before I get into basic the news with Shruti Gatwa and all that, so I thought, you know what, I'd do my review on the Tales from the TARDIS. So it is a kind of a six-part, like, spin-off series in the universe, which is actually quite good. So the first episode is... Hey, are those Daleks expensive? No. To be honest with you, I don't know how much they are now. I've got all these Daleks from History of the Dalek sets in B&M. I've kind of started when they first started back in 2019, 2020 times, and I got the first two sets, and then I've just kind of connected. So I'm all basically I'm just nearly all up to date. I just need to get my hands on the second set. Hi, yeah, Jamie, mate. How are you doing? Nice. Thank you for joining. So, tales of the Tardis, eh? So let's dive into it, shall we? Sick Blu-ray collection two. Ah, thank you. I'm quite proud of the collection wave so far no being and weren't not good at keeping them in stock um it's basically i popped in if they were there they were there and i just kind of grabbed them it's a shame how being and basically just lets people like grab them and sell them for stupid prices on ebay and that lot it's absolutely stupid that is and not really interesting i really think that's absolutely stupid so, Tales from the TARDIS, eh? So, Tales of the TARDIS, it is an absolutely brand new, amazing series on BBC iPlayer for the Hooniverse. And it's a great introduction story to the Hooniverse. Well, I kind of want to talk about each of the episodes first and what I personally enjoy from them. So, we have returning character, well, cast and their characters. So, like, for the first story, it's basically Peter Davison and Janet Fielding, and they're talking about the events of Earthshock, where we have some fantastic TARDIS scenes with little bits and dabs of echoes of different TARDISes. You see a bit of the 1983 to 1989 TARDIS console. We see a bit of the Heckelson Tenant console, Matt Smith's first console, the Capaldi console, and a bit of the 1960s console as well. And I love the fact how, basically, Janet... And Peter Jason are just absolutely brilliant as the Fifth Doctor and Tegan in this. Yes, I do pay for my TV licence. I absolutely do enjoy, basically, the Hooniverse on BBC iPlayer. So, the Earthshock one's actually quite good. Because I like the way how, basically, you've got the Fifth Doctor and Tegan basically talking talking about their, what they've been basically up to. And then, of course, the Doctor says, it is a tale TARDIS like a TARDIS that basically lives on stories and the Doctor goes I think we need to talk about Adric and of course we lead into the events of Earthshock and of course this is an absolutely best way to do this because instead of having it all like in four parts it's actually done so well because it's literally added little bits out of it so instead of having like the credit opening and the credit end to the cliffhangers it's one big massive on the birth version with a beginning of Earthshock with the fifth Doctor and Tika talking to Tyus and of course the end of it as well. Which is absolutely legendary to have. The story after that is absolutely something that is amazing for the next one as well. And it is the the Mind Robber where we have Freezer Hines basically playing Jamie McCrimmon and Wendy Perry as Zoe. And they've not played those characters since the 1960s, 1968, 1969. And they actually talk about the events when the Time Lords sent them all back into their own time zones, which is actually kind of a good way to basically do that with them. And 
in fact, they actually talk about the events of the TARDIS from their traps. Hang on, what's that about? Um, I put what collection set do I think is next? Uh, to be honest with you, the for Doctor the Collection sets, there's been quite a few rumours and we've had a few like little bits of leaks and stuff with Reza Hines and Wendy Perry back in April saying that they've just filmed some content for the Mind Rubber, which I do think it was actually part of the Tales from the TARDIS. If if not, then I do think Season 6 might be next. But basically, since 2021, we did have some interference with, like interference, like Twitter stuff with Louise Jameson. And she was saying, guess where I am? And that's basically at the, like at the back of where they filmed Horror of Fang Rock. So I really think the next two could either be Season 16 or Season 6. Hi, mates. How are you doing? Thoughts on the Underwater Menace release soon? I'm actually quite looking forward to it. I have to be honest. I'm not too keen on the Underwater Menace. It is my least favourite Troughton story. But that is because of how bad the Tiny Snap reconstructions are. And my god, they are absolutely terrible. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And I'm quite looking forward to seeing the animation release of it. So I think with it being animated, I might enjoy it a lot more. Especially with the missing episodes being animated, so I'll probably get rid of the DVD version or throw it in the bin or something because it's not one I do actually want to keep in the collection. When will we hear something about the standard edition next season 17? Honestly, I can't find anything about it. I've looked through basically Google and trying to find some awesome stuff about that. It was awful, but I think the animation will make it better. Definitely, definitely, I think the animation will make it better. I would like to say, yeah, I hope so before Christmas, but I'm thinking at this rate they'll probably release three next year of the standard releases because after season 17, you had season 22 and season 2. And I think they'll probably wait until next year so they can release season 22, season 17, season 22, and season 2 in the standard releases. And then, of course, the year after... We get the ones that we had for this year, aka season nine and season twenty. Ah, oh, now you're asking worst episode ever. Ooh. The problem is with me. There's quite a few stories I don't think are great. I don't think they're absolutely great for me to sit here and say. I mean, the worst story for me to say for me, what is basically the worst, and that has to go to the twin dilemma. I really do not enjoy The Twin Dilemma. It's not a brilliant introduction story to a new Doctor. It's absolutely crap. Scotty B, Web Planet for me. The Web Planet the Web Planet is actually quite good. I quite enjoy The Web Planet, to be honest with you. I do think The Web Planet is absolutely brilliant. The Aztec storyline, easy for me. How can you not like The Aztecs? The Aztecs is generally one of the best episodes from Season 1 for me. I actually quite enjoy it. Scotty B, I have never really seen The Twin Dilemma. Uh, I would not recommend it. I would not recommend it. If it comes out in Doctor of the Collection Season 21, then yeah. I think you have to watch it for Season 21. What's that? Hand, fear, fear her for me for the new ones. Yeah, definitely. Fear for, fear for her was absolutely crap. I mean, not a great one. Underworld, worse for classics, possibly. Well... If I was going to say what's the worst one for classics, then you're probably going to have to go with, basically, The Mutants. Because The Mutants ain't an absolute classic story, and I do not enjoy The Mutants. Yeah, I get what you mean about, basically, about the, with, Web of, with the, planet, the Web Planet basically being made in six episodes. It is a bit of a tough one, but if you can make it through, it's actually quite a good episode. Never seen on the world. I would like to try and defend Underworld, but I don't actually quite enjoy Underworld. It's just not a good one. Yeah, the Mutant Six Parts, that's a tough one. Yeah, I really do not like the Mutants. It is my least favourite Pertwee story in general. I just think it's not an interesting one, and I find it a bit dull, really, and I'm sorry to say that. I really do. Again, Underworld is probably one of the worst ones from the 70s, yeah. I have to agree with that one. I think it is. But it has got some good moments in there just for Tom. Because that's when Tom is being Tom and he's being epic. And that's what I quite enjoy about that. 
I have to be honest with you, I do really want the like the black and white being in colour as well. I wouldn't say bring them on DVD. I really wouldn't say bring them on to DVD. I would actually like to say, you know what? If they're going to bring them out, bring them out in Doctor Who, the collection, seasons one, seasons three, four and five and six. But there again, though, season three, it is in a very, very bad shape with basically three stories existing. Worst seven story to watch. Ah, you're probably going to hear what I'm going to say for that one. The worst seventh story would definitely be for me. The worst seventh Doctor story would have to be Doubter and the Bowman. Not an interesting one. Will Tom Baker be doing anything for the anniversary? To be honest, Jamie, I don't know. Because I've been told recently that basically Tom Baker has now retired. And I don't know if it's true or not. I'm hoping it's not because I know he's been doing a few big finish stuff. So I don't... I really wish he... I hope he hasn't retired because I know he's doing quite a few good, interesting things at Big Finish. So, if he has retired from acting, I'm glad he's just still doing Big Finish. I'm not sure he will be back for the TV, because he did not enjoy the Day of the Doctor, because apparently everybody ignored him apart from Matt Smith. So, Paul, The Smugglers animated next. The Smugglers has been highly like rumoured. It was announced back in the January that it was going to be animated with the underwater mess and the underwater mess has come true so i personally like to think yeah you know what if the smugglers is going to be animated that means there's only just one story left from season four and season four would be complete and you can actually release it in doctor the collection range and that story of course is the smuggler uh the highlanders is big box worth keeping now since iplayer has all of new who to be honest mate do you really, um, for me to say that, I would say yes, because with everything going on between the BBC and Anthony Coburn's son, who I think is just a massive idiot, I really think everything going on with the whole licence fee with the Unearthly Child, it is still on BritBox. So I would like to say, yeah, you know what, just, just basically keep it just for, you know, just keep it for the un for the unearthly child if not then i would actually say get the box set it's still 9.99 in hmv and of course it is available on amazon as well josh evans says hi everyone dalek vision of earth is my favorite for the first doctor yes yes i'm glad somebody else has said it the first that that is my favorite story for the first doctor myself the dalek invasion of earth it was actually the first ever william hartnell story i actually ever watched I really have to be honest with you. That was the first Hartnell story. I think they should animate the Space Pirates next or either get the worst one on over or surprise everyone like the work. Uh, Space Pirates. To be honest with you, mate, John, I don't know nothing about the Space Pirates. It's one that I haven't really been interested in to looking into. I do have episode two in the Lost in Time DVD box set. And I just don't think episode two would be quite good but i do enjoy it but i don't know why people don't really like it when are we going to get the will in space animation scott i don't know i really don't know i have i love literally the macro terror because it has come with a little bit of a scene from that story animated but i'm hoping that they go back and finish that story off because i really think it'd be interesting to have all of the simon stories from classic who complete on dvd and that's the same because Technically, at the moment, we do have the 10th planet. We do have the the moon base, the Tomb of the Summit. We do have the invasion for the 60s. So we do need the William Space to complete the 60s off for the Summit stories. I really do kind of want them to work on that one. If the William Space is to be animated next year, I'm going to be 100%. I will be jumping for joy because it just means season five will technically be complete. I'm off now. See you all and love your videos, Paul. Keep it keep it going mate thank you so much mate i hope you have a good evening and i will keep making more me fantastic content i really will as we're saying for the wheel in space i would actually be jumping for joy on that one when that does get animated because it's the one story i really think i want to see the most and i have seen the telesnap snap reconstructions can you see new who being in the collection sets and when can you see it announced Right, I have been talking to quite a few people about New Who being in the collection sets and 
some people say that they don't want it to happen and all that. I mean, I've been talking to a friend, Daniel, a couple of months ago. He says he doesn't want it to happen. I'm going to be 100% honest. I actually do want it to happen now. Because if Doctor Who is having this big, massive reboot next year with Series 14, a.k.a. being called Season 1, and they're going back to the beginning, I have to be honest with you. I really do want them to release the modern the, the first part of Modern Who. Basically, Modern Who Phase 1. Shall we just all just agree to call it that? Modern Who Phase 1. I would like to say, yes, I would like to see Modern Who Phase 1 come in the collection set. And I would think it would be brilliant if they actually released, like, Series 1 in 2025 when it comes to the 20th anniversary of season series one and that's when the show came back also i'd like to see the behind the sofa sets as well imagine christopher eccleson and billy piper on behind the sofa watching series one or having billy piper and david tennant sitting down behind the sofa watching series one and two yeah, I think that would actually be quite interesting, really. But I do think if they're going to do Series 1 to 13 in the collection sets, then maybe I would actually like to say round about 2025 for when it comes to the 20th anniversary of the revival. Or should I say Modern Who Phase 1? How would you call it, Scott? Do you, what would you call it? Would you call it Modern Who Phase 1? or And what would you call this new era with it going on to Disney Plus? Would you call it the Disney era of the show, or would you just call it Modern Who Phase 2? I really don't know what to call it. I don't know if I should just call it New Who Phase 2. I really think that might be interesting to see what you lot think. Would you call? How would you call it? Yes, mate, I do agree. I really think that would actually be brilliant if Heckleson did be more approachable now. Considering that he's doing amazing stuff on Big Finish and doing conventions, as you say, John, I think he would love it. With the Universe logo and video and the reboot coming, it does feel like a Marvel vibes. The Doctor is our superhero, I suppose, but still a madman with a box. Yes, Jamie Arrowsmith. Um, yes, mate. I do agree with you on that one. It does feel very Marvel vibes with the Universe, doesn't it? I mean, some people have asked me about what would I do with all my DVDs and the Blu-rays now it's all gone on to Disney+. Plus. To be honest with you, I know some people are getting rid of them. Some people have been putting them all up for sale on Facebook and eBay and stuff. They're massive whole collections. I'm not doing that. The Wire is returning. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't know about that one because I hope not. I'd never liked The Wire. I think The Wire was one of the worst villains in Series 2. Now you're asking me, mate, what classic monsters do I want to see to return? Well, to be honest with you, I have a big, massive list. A very, very massive list with over 20-odd characters I would like to see return for the villains. Like, for Hartnell's era, I'd like to see the return of, you know, the the Mechanoids. I would really love to see the return of the Mechanoids from the chase and have a Dalek battle with them. And having the 15th Doctor caught up with that. <laughs> Jamie, you know I don't like The Wire. <laughs> I really don't like The Wire. Oh, mate, I, I just don't like The Wire. Not an interesting one. But... Paul, what Tales from the TARDIS was your favourite? I personally think the Fifth Doctor did it with draw. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But to be honest with you, I've kind of got two favourites from Tales from the TARDIS. And my first favourite has to be Earthshock because I really do like the way how Peter Davison and... Janet Fielding get on with that one. But I have to be honest with you, I absolutely love The Curse of Fenric as well. I really do love Curse of Fenric. But when you see Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Oldred sitting down talking about their their time together and that she only saw him recently in The Power of the Doctor as a hologram. Absolutely best way to do that. I mean, the fact that she mentioned the hologram from The Power of the Doctor, that I just love how that bit just all comes canon now. Just generally just all comes canon i just really love that thinking about the month the classic monsters i like to see return now there are basically there is as i said the mechanoids there's the black guardian there's the irani there is basically some monsters i do want to see back from the tom baker era like the kind of rhino alien people that we see 
in the Android Invasion. I can't remember them. I like to see the return of the Fandal from Image of the Fandal. Uh, because I think I really love that design. And I think Modern Who's technology could actually do really, really well with that one with, with the Fandal. I also would like to see the return of some monsters from Colin Baker's era. Like the return of the Borad. But, and I also would like to see the return of basically something that I absolutely do really want to see the return of. And that is Syl from Ventures and Veros and Mind Warp. I would like to see the return of Syl because I really think that might be interesting. How many days would it take to watch season 12 of the collection all the way to season 20 of the collection LOL? I haven't really tried that. I, I'm not going to attempt it. It would take ages. Yes, I do think Joe Grant is actually going to get her own series. If if Russell T. Davis was actually going to do it, because I think it will make an interesting spin-off. Like, how good the Sarah Jane Adventures was, I really think that the Joe Grant Adventures or the Joe Jones Adventures would actually work. I think that would be absolutely brilliant. And I'd like to see the return of the big giant maggots if it is a Joe Grant series. So let us see an adult Joe see the return of the big giant maggots and the boss. And I'd like to see her have to call in favours from Unit. I really think that would be quite interesting. Yes, I know. God blimey, it's nearly been what? It's, what can I say? It's been 2011 the Sarah Jane Adventures ended. So... 11... Around about 12 years since it, the Sojourn Adventures ended, so yeah. What Hartnell slash Triumph stories would you like to see colorized after the Daleks? Now, talking about the colorization of the Daleks, and I'm really looking forward to that, I would actually say there are three more stories for Hartnell, and there are four stories I'd like to see of Troughton to be colorized because I think these would be beneficial, and I would like to see these kind of get released during 2024, 2025, 2026. If, like, have one special colorized episode of classic coup from the 60s so for hartnell i would actually like to see the war machines get colorized the chase get colorized and the daleks invasion of earth because i really think those stories might benefit from being colorized i mean with the dalek vision earth it is the second dalek story and we do say goodbye to in and uh, to susan and imagine that scene being in color i think people would actually love that one the chase, again, I think that was just absolutely brilliant because think of all the iconic shots you can actually see in colour like New York, the the planets that the Dykes chase around the Doctor in and, of course, the the haunted house thing against Dracula and the Dykes when Frankenstein picks the Dalek up and, of course, the jungle of the Mechanus planet. I would, I would want the 10th planet. If episode 4 was actually found then yes i would actually like to see the template be anim like colorized but not really do you think animating big finished audios would be something we could look forward to adding into the collection yes i have already met this out um i've already did a video on this a couple of months ago about basically animating some of the big finished some of the big finished audios can you see the collection sets going up in price? Yes. Yes, I can. I think, say, um, at the moment, I would like to say, because at the moment I have been looking on Doctor Who collection set on season nine, and this did come out back in March, April, March time. And I have still seen this only for £49.99. So... I don't think anything from this set this year is going to be going straight up. I think anything from the past, like season 12, season 19, season 10, season 18, season 23, and season 26, I think they will probably jump up a lot in price now that the fact they're now available on BBC iPlayer. But that's the thing people need to remember. Everything that we get in these collection sets, like all the special features and everything else, these are only available in the collection set. So when you go to BBC iPlayer, you've only just got the episodes. You don't have behind the sofa. You don't have all the extras that we do have on the DVD and, of course, on the Blu-ray. So that's the one thing people don't really think about. Like, oh, yeah, let's sell all my Doctor Who DVDs on Blu-rays. But, yeah, you're missing all the best things, like behind the sofa and all that. I really think people will not benefit from getting rid of them. Going back to John's question, do you think animating Big Finish would 
be something to look we can look forward to adding into the collection. Yes. Mainly, just mainly because of, basically because of Paul McGann. Because we're having Paul McGann's audios animated. I think that will be a big selling point for us Doctor Who fans. It means we can have eighth Doctor stories on the shelf. We can have them in Blu-ray in the collection sets. Imagine having like series one of the eighth Doctor Adventures with Lucy Miller and then of course having all the Charlie Pollard episodes and anim like animated as well. So imagine having Storm Warning, Sword of the Ryan, uh the Venice episode, I can't remember what it's called, sorry. Um the Midnights of Charms. Behind the sofa is the best feature on the box sets. It's a great scene. Yes. Yes, it is one of the best things. It is. Uh, anyway, so that's what I'm saying for colorization. So for Patrick Troughton, I would actually like to see the invasion get animated, but only if episodes one and four are found. If that can't be found, and then there are another three. So the first one I kind of want is the war games. Imagine having Troughton's last ever story colorized, all 10 episodes turn into a massive Oniburst version in colour. Imagine witnessing the last ever regeneration of the 60s in colour. I think that would absolutely be brilliant. The next one after that as well, I'll let's see Tomb of the Cybermen, have Tomb of the Cybermen kind of colourised because Tomb of the Cybermen to me, it is an iconic story. Some people hate it, some people love it. I absolutely love it. It's one of my personal favourites from season five. And then the next one I'd like to see animated, well, colourised, is from season six. And that will have to be the Seeds of Death. The Seeds of Death for the Ice Warriors. It would be nice to see the Ice Warriors colourised for 60s Doctor Who. I really think that might be interesting. Considering that the Ice Warriors have returned twice, when are we going to get a second Doctor set and what set? Season 6 has been highly rumoured by Freezer Hines and Wendy Perry back in early April. So, I do think definitely Season 6 might be the next one to get animated. I'm quite looking forward to seeing Season 6 to be, like, not animated. A little, a little less, though. I would actually like to see Season 6 come out in the collection set next. Would the movie get a set or will it be part of New Who? Right. Talking about the TV movie, it depends. Because on B BBC iPlayer, it is classed as classic who. Because they've had it on to 19, the 1963 to 1996 uh, like, kind of lots. But to be honest with you, I don't really think it should be part of New Who. I think it should be part of classic who. And I would like to see it get part in the Wonderness years. Joshua Evan... Uh, uh, Evans, if it's Joshua Evans. Sorry if I got the name wrong. Paul, have you got Wave 2 of the B&M set yet? No. Unfortunately, because I live in Shropshire, none of our Shropshire stores have got any of the new sets in yet. And I mean this because last week I got told about them being in B&M stores, so I thought I'd go and try Telford, I'd go and try Shrewsbury, and I even tried Whitchurch. And nothing no none of the new sets unfortunately because out of the new sets i really want to get me hands on two sets which is basically the deadly assassin set and of course the Re Re remembrance of the dalek set so i do kind of want to get remembrance of the dalek set the most because it is my favorite mccoy story i thought they would have added it with season 26 as an extra disc to be honest mate it was already released on blu-ray like, here, as you can see, I got mine signed by Paul McGowan when I met him back last December. So, I really don't mind it not being part of the collection set, but I really would like to have it in the collection set because I was very, very gutted with this release because it's basically just the DVD release, not even touched up for HD. Do you worry about space in your room for DVDs and merchandise? Yes, I am kind of worrying about little bits of space at the moment i have put up another shelf because i've have got like as you can see behind me i've got this shelf i've got another shelf this side i've got two to straw units together where i kind of put my figures across i've got a shelf unit of doctor who figures and i've got a glass cabinet for the doctor who figures and i i am a little bit worried <laughs> about everything your room looks full as Looks full as LOL. Yeah, my room is pretty full, but I would actually work. Paul, have you spoken to other Doctor Who contents creators like 
there were a few death, Joshua Snares and Who Culture. No, I haven't really messaged anybody. I do watch Josh and the Snares. I do watch the review of Death. And I do watch Who Culture. But I haven't really messaged them. Because I don't know what to actually talk to them about. Because they know more about Doctor Who than Little Bits and Devs that I do. I know quite a lot of Doctor Who. But Josh and Snares knows a lot more about the missing episodes. Where I've not really been kind of interested in the missing episodes, but at the moment in time, I currently am with everything being animated, so I do really want other stories to be animated and stuff, so I really do have to say, if I could, I would actually like to talk to Josh and the Snares at some point. I would like to message him, but I can't find him through like social media stuff. You, Yes, Scott, my room is actually really full of Doctor Who content with figures and to be honest with you I've got a load of Doctor Who stuff because it's not just the figures I got with the DVDs the Blu-rays I do have big finish as you know I have got the Target Box collection I've got the VHSs you got all no um jo uh, Scott I haven't got any of the classic well I have got a lot of classic Doctor Who on VHS I haven't got all of the stories that was released on VHS and I probably won't at the moment until I get my own place. Because I have made a plan out for when I get my own property. When I do get to move out of living with my parents. His house. I kind of have got plans. Because I'm going to have a load of shelves up. Basically. All around my room. Did New Who ever get VHS Series 1? No. New Who was never released on VHS. But to be honest with you. I did used to record them onto VHS Scott. So when they were airing, like Series 1, when they were airing, I used to rewatch them all week, rewind them. My dad used to record each episode that was coming out from Series 1 to Series 4. We did stop recording round about Series 5 because of BBC iPlayer. And you could rewatch them any time that I wanted through lap like the laptop, my dad's old laptop and stuff. So we did stop round about Series 5. We, I, we did actually record... All of Series 1, all of Series 2, all of Series 3, and all of Series 4 on VHS. Yeah, I would love to see the Space Museum, the mind of... The Space Museum, no, I'm not too keen on the Space Museum, sorry Doctor Who, uh, Magic Entertainment. I'm not too keen on the Space Pirates. If it was going to be coloured, I don't know if I would actually enjoy it more. I just don't really think it's one of the great ones for me. John, have you ever thought of doing a Doctor Who podcast? Yes, I have thought about doing a Doctor Who podcast, but it is basically trying to find somebody that basically wants to do it with me. I have been thinking of getting a few friends on the podcast, but at the moment, because I work four days a week, normally four days a week, sometimes five days a week, depends what shifts I get at work. It is a bit hard for me to try and set up a podcast because i i'm gonna be a bit honest i have actually thought about doing my own doctor who fan made series with me playing the doctor obviously but i have thought about it and it's just having the time to do it at the moment i would love to do my own fan made series and i would love to do a podcast i think i'd be actually quite good as the doctor yeah as my best friend tells me jamie asked if he's always told me i'm quite good as the doctor i do remind him a lot of the 11th Doctor, so which is actually quite good to me because I actually do quite enjoy the 11th Doctor. He is in the top 10 Doctors for me. I'm sorry to say that. I thought, I love your content. What animations would you want next for the collection, for the classic series? Ah. Now, this one is going to be a bit of a list for you because I kind of want all of the 60s era to be animated. All the missing stories, I just want them to be animated but for the ones that I really want the most, there are basically five. There are five stories I do kind of want to be animated. So the first one is, of course, the highly, the highly extravagant of amazing story. And that is the Daleks Master Plan, the 12 part epic story. I would love to see that get animated. I would love to see all of it to be animated, to be honest with you. But I think if it being like 12 parts, I don't think they've got the budget. I hope they do. Because I really would love to see the Daleks Master Plan. Because it's the one story I do own on CD. Audio CD. And I actually quite loved it. I think it's a fantastic story. And I really do enjoy 
Hartnell's performance in the audio, but imagine seeing that on screen, I think would absolutely be amazing. Honestly, I think it would be. So I would like to see the, as I said, the Daleks master plan. I would also like to see the Highlanders basically get animated next after, you know, basically after the underwater menace, because it means season four can be complete. And then it'd be amazing to have all of season four. Just basically all of season four complete. I really would be so be fantastic for that one. I would also like to see again animated basically the wheel in space. I would love to see that one complete. I think the space pirates would be quite good as well. So that way we can have seasons four, five, and six complete. Even though if the smugglers is next, I would like to see basically the smugglers and the Highlanders become next. For season three, there are so many stories I would like to see basically get animated. And to be honest with you, there is actually one that is in rumour fill at the moment and that is they actually are animating the missing serial known as the celestial toy maker and if that is going to be animated i think i'm going to be so happy with that one because i actually do quite enjoy episode four and i haven't got any of the other stories like the other episodes for that one apart from on cd and i have listened to them and it's really hard to picture picture it if if you know what episode four is it's really hard to have your like your imagination go wild while you listen to that story and then you go to episode four and it just ruins your anime like yeah yeah even though i would think over oh, that one jamie i'll be interested as to how should you get where ranks up with your doc with the other doctors ah jamie i'm really looking forward to shooting gatwa I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm not happy about it being called season one, season two, season three, and apparently season four is in development. I'm not really happy with them being called se seasons because I am going to get mixed up with the classic series like Doctor the Collection season two, Doctor the Collection season one, Doctor the Collection season three, Doctor the Collection season four, when those ones get announced. I will get a bit confused with that, with that to be honest with you. I kind of wish they called it something else, like... Instead of calling it season one, call it Doctor Who Disney series one, something like that. But I'm not too fond of it. But Shruti Gatwa, I think, is going to be a good incarnation of the Doctor. From what I have seen through him through um, Sex Education on Netflix. And I know he's in the new Barbie film. I haven't seen it, but I have seen a little bit, some clips and dabs of him. And... He seems a very quite unique actor, and I think he might be good for the Doctor. When I was watching like the clips for the Barbie movie, like for the Barbie movie, I think I actually see a little bit of Troughton's performance in him. But I'm hoping to see that when he actually becomes the Doctor. I'm really looking forward to seeing him become the Doctor. I mean, the Christmas episode is called the Church of Ruby's Road, which is something I'm thinking. If you're going to call it the Church of Ruby's Road, why not just think of a different name for it? So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Street Gat was going to be. Can you see Doctor Who doing the proms again? To be honest, Scott, I think no. I really think Doctor Who's days at the proms are over. Because if they were going to do Doctor Who at the proms, it would have been this year. I really think this year. I think it should have been this year if we were going to have Doctor at the proms. Because it'd be fitting to have Doctor Who the 60th anniversary. I know we had a kind of... I think, like, celebrating all the musical Doctor Who for the past 60 years. But I do think if we were going to get Doctor Who at the proms, it should have been that. And you asked me another question, sorry. How long will we have the new Doctor for? The last Doctor at the proms was 2013. When we had the 50th anniversary. So, I don't think we're going to get another Doctor at the proms. Uh, how, how long do we think we're going to have Shooty Gatwa for? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know. I would like to say longer than three series seasons because with most of the Doctors in the modern era, we've had three series with David Tennant as the 10th Doctor, three series with Matt Smith, three series with Capaldi, and three series with Jodie Whittaker. I really would like to see Shooty Gatwa kind of break that three season limit where he goes on and does like probably four or five. If he does five, that brings him up to neck and neck with John Pertwee. If I really do want to see somebody beat Tom Baker's record, Tom Baker's record is seven years, seven seasons. So I kind of want him to, I really kind of want him just to carry on with that if she would stay. So when was the last one? Okay. What spin-off is your favourite and what new spin-off would you want? Interesting question because my favourite spin-off is Torchwood. I think Torchwood, even though it's not like set for 
like the main young audience is actually set for proper adults. I really do enjoy the setting of Torchwood. The stories are a lot more darker and a little bit more grimmer in like seasons one and two. Children of the Earth, amazing. I actually quite enjoy Children of the Earth. I never quite liked Miracle Day. Miracle Day what is the one that I really think drags Torchwood down a bit. In fact, even though I do have them literally here in the display cabinet, like Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, and Series 4, I'm not too fond on Miracle Day. And the other one is, what new spin-off would you want? I wouldn't really want a new spin-off. I kind of want them to carry on one spin-off that kind of left on a cliffhanger back in 2016. And I actually quite enjoy this spin-off. I'm talking about Class. I really want Class to return. I know some people hate it. Some people thought it was abomination. But I absolutely love Class. And I really want them to have a second series. I think everything that was building up through this series. With the Shadow King. With the Doctor. With the Weeping, that Weeping Angel cliffhanger. And of course I thought that cliffhanger would have played into Flux. But it didn't. It actually didn't. And that's the thing. It actually never did. So I really do want class to return. You never seen class. To be honest, mate, it is an eight part epic series. It's an it's just absolutely brilliant. Capaldi is in it for the first episode, and he does give that fantastic line where it says, Time never forgets. I really love that speech he does, Capaldi. Seven years out of it. I can see fan base turning on the doctor towards the end in all despairs, I guess. To be honest with you, I don't know, because the fan base never really turned against Tom Baker, did they? When he was coming up to the end of his tenure. Longest Doctor Who companion. Jesus Christ, mate. Um, you need you need a big, 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 massive list, because we have quite a few longest companions. So we've got the Brigadier from 1968 all the way up to 1989. We have Sarah Jane Smith. We have... Basically, Jamie McQuimmon, because he's basically the longest companion to stay with a Doctor, well, apart from Yaz. Oh, my days, yes, bring back class. Weeping Angels, it's like Doctor Who, Star Trek Prodigy. People just don't know how realise how good it is until it goes. But let's just, it gets saved like Prodigy, and it deserves a return. Different times, no social media. Yeah, I do know that. Yes, uh, Jamie. I really do agree with you. I really want Class back because I actually did quite enjoy Class. Class, to me, it is the third best spin-off after Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures. I actually did quite enjoy Class. I mean, out of the four spin-offs that we got for Doctor Who, which is basically k Company, Torchwood, the Sarah Jane Adventures, and Class, I really want Class just to have a bit more of a longer period, like time period. I'm trying to build up my Doctor Who collection. Where should I go to buy previous releases of the collection range? Which ones have you got? Because I would like to try and say CX will be the best opportunity for you. But if not, so I know some people hate it. But I would have to say you might have to go to eBay for basically. Like for the really, really starts of, of the collection range with season 12. I really think, yeah, CEX or definitely eBay. I want Torchwood back myself. I really think that cliffhanger when you see Rex get shot and he comes back to life and he goes, hey, you Werewolf 2, what the hell have you done to me? They can't just end it like that. And when we saw Jack return in the Whitaker era with basically Future of the Jew and Revelation of the Daleks, there was no mention of Rex. And, of course, Rex is actually immortal. So, I really want to see the return of Torchwood and... Even though I don't quite enjoy Miracle Day, Rex is one of the good characters to come out of Miracle Day. That's the one thing I'm going to say about that. Rex is literally one of the best characters to ever come out of Miracle Day. But I really do want Class back. I'm sorry to say that. I, I know I keep repeating myself here, but I really, really do want Class back. I actually quite enjoyed it. I know it moved on to Big Finish and... It hasn't lasted well on Big Finish. I know some people don't like it on Big Finish. So I really wanted to have basically a return into the TV screens in the Hooniverse. I really think it's an amazing spin-off. And I don't know why people didn't like it. I really don't get why people never liked Class. But that cliffhanger with the Weeping Angel and, of course, the... Uh, oh, what's it? The Governors. The whole plot of the Governors working on. 
do you think we big finish should do an audio story with the eighth doctor jamie and sarah no i don't think the eighth doctor jamie and sarah jane would actually work now i really would like to see the eighth doctor with ace have Sophie Aldred and Paul McGann work together in, in, in a Big Finish audio. I think that would absolutely be amazing to actually sit down and listen to. Can you ever see the TARDIS changing shape like in Classic Who? The way the console rooms keep changing, I have to be honest with you. I really want... I, I'm not too fond of Modern Who. I'm going to say that. I haven't really been too keen in the modern era. It's got some good episodes in there, but I'm more of a classic Doctor Who fan myself. That's the one thing I'm going to say. I really prefer classic Who to modern Who. And I do like the way how every now and again they kind of update the console room in the TARDIS, where in modern Who they haven't really done that. I mean, Heck as a Tenant had the same console room all the way through. Matt Smith had two console rooms, which is one good thing about the Matt Smith era. Capaldi only had the one. Jodie Whittaker had that big, massive monstrosity. I'm sorry to say that, but it, it's just a big, massive monstrosity that Whitaker one is. Your second and sixth Doctor cosplays were grey. Any new ones in the works? Yes, John. I've actually got five cosplays I actually do. I'm currently I'm working on, and I really don't want to get them. So really, I do kind of want to cosplay the first Doctor. I can get his our costume from Cost Daddy, where I got me Colin Baker outfit from. But it's trying to track down the wig for Hartnell. I would actually love to go around to Comic Con and conventions and going, hmm, yes, 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 yes. One day I shall come back. Yes, I shall come back. I just absolutely love Hartnell's Doctor and I would love to cosplay him. I would also love to cosplay the fourth Doctor at some point because there's actually two outfits of the fourth Doctor I really want to cosplay. They're his beginning outfit from seasons 12 and a little bit of season 13. And I really want to cosplay his season 18 outfit. I really do love his season 18 outfit. The whole burgundy and stuff. So I do kind of want to see. I do actually want to cosplay that one. And the other two cosplays. Because that's basically three or four. I want to cosplay Paul McGann's Doctor from the TV movie. And I do want to cosplay John Pertwee's Doctor from season 7. Because I just absolutely love Pertwee's outfit from that season. Can you see Modern Who beating Classic Who in terms of stories? No. I really don't think that. I don't think Modern Who will actually ever beat Classic Who in stories. Because Classic Who has got so many stories. So many iconic stories. Basically, just... Oh, God. Classic Who just does so much better. I really think Classic Who is so much better. Would it be a dream if you got offered a part in Doctor Who from being a monster to anything, I guess? Yes, I would love to be in Doctor Who. If I actually got offered a part, I would actually love to be possibly a future incarnation of the Doctor. It'd be, it'd be, it's my biggest dream to actually play the Doctor. It actually is one of my biggest dreams. But if I can't play the Doctor, I would actually be... I would actually love to be like a companion. If I was going to play a villain, I would like to be something, an up-to-date version from classic who say if i played the basically an upstate version on the black guardian or basically the master or something i really think i would love to be a part of it i bet david bradley would love your first doctor cosplay i hope he will when i do get around to me like getting it i actually do because i am actually meeting david bradley next saturday when i go to comic con in telford and i'm taking my big finished box set of his, the only one that i've got of his for him to sign which is from Ian 4, which is basically a great box set for me to jump onto for him, but I kind of wish I did dive in a bit earlier in his range with C with From Ian 1, because I think I would absolutely love to hear him against the Master. How many stories? I swear it's... There's about 800... In, at the moment, there's literally about 800 episodes of Doctor Who. That's basically between modern and classic. There's literally about 800 and something. What is your best series of classic Who? My all-time favourite season of classic Doctor Who has to be season 13. It is the one season I can just keep going back and rewatch all of the time. Just all of the time. I love Terror of the, Terror of the Saigons. I love Planet of Evil. I love the Pyramids of Mars. I love a little bit of the Android Invasion. It's not a great story. It's just the one in the middle that's kind of a bleh sort of thing. And then, of course, we have 
the brain of morbius and the seas of doom which are two iconic stories from that season same with pyramids of mars i just absolutely love season 13 would you love to get all your of uh, all of your classic doctor who dvd side yes that is my biggest ambition to get all of my doctor who dvds signed at the moment i've only got three DVDs signed and then i've got some of the collection range signed so i've actually got the moment signed i've got Revelation of the Daleks with Peter Davison, Revelation of the Daleks with Colin Baker, and Remembrance of the Daleks from Sylvester McCoy. Paul McGann has signed the TV movie on Blu-ray. And then, of course, I've got, basically, on the collection sets at the moment, I've got Season 19 signed by Peter Davison and Janet Fielding, as you can see here. I've got Season 23 signed by Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant. And I've got seasons 24 and 26 signed by Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Oldred. I know they're there next week at Comic Con. It's just haven't the money for me to go and take everything, take everything for them to sign. If I could, I would actually take The Curse of Fenwick on DVD for Sylvester McCoy to sign. I would actually take Ventures on Varos for Colin Baker to sign. And for Peter Davison, I would actually take The Caves of Androzani. But I did have... Kava Androzani basically signed this box set. So basically, at the moment, I have got the Peter Davison one signed by him. I've got, haven't got the Colin Baker one signed, but yeah, I haven't got the Colin Baker one signed. I've got Sylvester McCoy signed. Literally, I got Sylvester McCoy and I got Paul McGann. In that one as well. So I do have Paul McGann's autograph twice. I would love to get Paul McGann to sign some big finishes though. That is my biggest ambition. Get some big finishes signed from Paul McGann. And the others. Well, when I met David Bradley. I'm going to get him to sign the Space Museum. I'm going to be honest with you. Because David Bradley is in Telford next week when I go. I literally do want to take two for hi two things for him to sign. But he is £40. But believe it or not. And of course... Alex Kingston, who plays with a song, and Jenna Coleman, who is go who played Clara, they're both going as well. So I'm literally getting those three sits. I'm literally going to get those three to sign different things. Like for David Bradley, I'm getting to sign a big finish where basically I'm going to get Jenna Coleman and Alex Kingston to sign these little beauties. And I'm cosplaying Matt Smith at the time. I was going to go as Colin Baker, but I'm not. Not this time, because with Alex Kingston and Jenna Coleman going, it's not very rarely I get to see them both at a convention. So I'm getting Alex Kingston to sign Series 6 and Jenna Coleman to sign Series 7. That's the only ones I'm kind of getting signed by them. I would like to get Twice Upon a Time signed by David Bradley, but I'm going to see how much my budget can stretch to that day at Comic-Con. I'm really looking forward to that. Sorry, I'm late, Paul. I was looking forward at... I oh, was at the disco. Are you looking forward to season 15 or 6 next on the Blu-ray set? Joseph May, yes. I do. I'm really looking forward to season 6 the most. Season 6 is, as you all know, it is my favourite Troughton season. It is my favourite 60 season. So I kind of am looking forward to that one. What is your favourite speech from Doctor Who? Ah. Now, there are quite a few speeches I just absolutely love. There are so many iconic speeches I love. There's literally, in all my travels in the universe and my battles against evil, against power mad conspirators, I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization, rotterate, degenerate, and rotten to the core, Dalek, Santar, and Cybermen. They're still in the nursery compared to us. Ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. I really love that speech. I really love the fact when the 12th Doctor you, talks about that speech, the anti-war speech, he goes... Where he goes, when you fired that first shot, you've got no idea who's going to die. You've got no idea whose children are going to scream and burn. How many hearts we've broken. How many lives shattered. How much blood was spilt until everything does what everyone's supposed to do now. Sit down and talk. I really think that would be quite interesting. I love those speeches. I might be back later, Paul. Thanks for answering my questions. You're very welcome, Scott. I uh, hope, hope you come back. I think an unearthly child will be colorized on season one box set. At the moment, mate, the way things are going on with the son of Anthony Coburn, I can't remember his name, so please can somebody just tell me his name because I might just end up calling him the idiot. So the son of Anthony Coburn, who's basically a moron slash idiot, 
is trying to pull it off the BBC for the copyrights and stuff. I mean, he did try this back for the copyrights of the TARDIS. Ah, thank you, Seth Coburn. I do think he's a massive idiot, though. And the fact that he's doing all this to the BBC, I think he's an absolute idiot. And I don't think it's going to be part of season one. I don't think season one will be coming out anytime soon because of this. Do you collect Doctor of the Magazine? Yes. Yes, I do. I have. I do collect the Doctor of the Magazines. I've got a little part of a collection of them, of where I've got them. I can't really get to them because of the way everything is at the moment from where I'm filming. But I will probably show them. I think I've done a collection. I think I've done a collection. Uh, uh, yes, I am looking forward to the 60th anniversary, mate. I really am looking forward to it. The 60th anniversary, I think, is going to be a flat-out massive event. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't think we are going to get another regeneration box set. I really, I would love to have an up-to-date one with basically Time of the Doctor, Twice Upon a Time, The Power of the Doctor. I think this would have been the perfect time, basically, to have it round about now, but I don't think so. No, sorry. I just don't think so. What is your favourite Doctor Who book? Ah. Now, that is a tricky one. Because I've got two Doctor Who books I absolutely love. And they're both Target books. So, the first one has got to go to, basically, The Five Doctors. I got that early this year. I absolutely love reading it. I think it's absolutely amazing. I was supposed to go to the, basically, the air, like the massive event they were doing to show the five doctors 40th anniversary edition at the bfi i never went because i couldn't get hold of the tickets so yeah i did enjoy that one and of course my second favorite one has got to go to silver nemesis because i have read it and i do have a review coming out on silver nemesis target book and look quite looking forward to actually releasing that the 12th doctor speech to the master missy in the yes I love that speech as well, but I don't think... It's not as iconic as some of the other ones he did. Uh, I don't know, Joshua. I never really watched uh, Fireball and Space 1999. I never really watched them. Are you doing anything for Paul McGann's birthday next Tuesday? At the moment, no. I'm sorry to say that, but no, Doctor Who Magic Entertainment... At the moment, I'm currently celebrating six years of the show where I'm just watching one story per day of each Doctor. So since basically the 1st of November, I kind of watched The Unearthly Child. Then I watched The Invasion for Troughton on the 2nd. For the 3rd, I watched Spare from Space on the 4th. I actually watched, fantastically, I actually did watch uh, the, Robot, the Robots of Death. Then I watched The Visitation only on the 5th of November for Davison. Yesterday, I actually watched Time Lash because today is actually the 7th. I'm actually going to be watching, after I've done this live stream, I'm going to be watching Remembrance of the Daleks. Yes. The TV movie will be tomorrow. Tomorrow will be my rewatch of the TV movie, and then I'll be watching, like, for the story for Heckleson. It's definitely going to be Dalek. For Tenant, I think it's going to be Waters of Mars. For Matt Smith, I think it's going to be a different story because I am watching all of the multi doc stories between the 21st and the 23rd. I am watching all the multi doctor stories then. I'm getting an unearthly child VHS for Christmas just in case the price goes up. I'm watching John Pertwee for the moment. What VHS have you got, mate? Because there are two VHS copies for the unearthly child. You got the 19, the 19, 1999, the 1991, and you've got the early 2000, like the 2001 remastered version, which I do have both. What is your favourite classic companion? Who is your favourite New Who companion? So, my favourite classic companion is Ace. I absolutely love Ace. Sophie Aldred, I used to have a little bit of a crush on her growing up as Ace. I used to love re-watching the McCoy era with me dad. So, I do remember watching that with him. And for Modern Who, it's got to go to Donna. I really think Donna... Is what Tegan should have been. But I think John has done so much better than the way Tegan was. For the Davidson era. After the news about the Unearthly Child. I started John Pertwee instead. Good choice mate. Pertwee. I think because basically everything from the 70s onwards is basically complete. The 70s is the best way to rewatch. Ah. Good lad. The, 19, the, 1990, the 1990 version VHS. I've got that myself. I've got both of them. And I do love rewatching them. The one thing I don't have is Edge of Destruction because it does have the pilot on VHS. So I am trying to track that one down 
at some point. That is the plan. Try and track it down. Try and track it down. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, I'm going to try and track it down. So anyway, my favourite classic companion is Ace, where my favourite model companion is Donna. I was going to do a massive ranking video of all of the companions, but... That video was actually a three hour long video and I'm not posting a three hour long video off. So <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not posting a three hour long video on that one. So I'm going to try and do that into like parts where I do ranking all the companions part, say like part one, where I do basically from my least favorite to bit round about that one. What is your favorite villain? Ah, what is my favourite villain, eh? So, my favourite villain of Doctor Who is, of course, the Daleks. I just absolutely love the Daleks. They are my all-time favourite Doctor Who villain. I love basically rewatching every single one of their stories, even the ones that I find not as good. Like, for Modern Who, I don't enjoy Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks. I think that's the worst Dalek two-parter I have ever seen in the history of Doctor Who. And I do apologise to that comment Mr. Arrowsmith before you end up sending your Daleks over here to try and exterminate me for that I just don't enjoy it I really don't enjoy it but the Daleks are my favourite villain Daleks are absolutely the strongest villain I can actually ever say I was getting the 1984 version of the Brenner Mobius in Brighton I worry the tape would be fizzy will be fizzy I think have I got it Yes, do you mean this one, mate? Sorry, I've got a little cabinet down here where it's got most of my feature dresses in. Do you mean this little beauty? For the brain of Marbius. This little beauty. Yeah. Or do you mean the original? Or the original one for the brain of Marbius? <laughs> yeah. What is the best Dalek story? Oh, now you're asking. Because... To me, there are so many iconic best Dalek stories. There are so many iconic stories. If I could name five quick best Dalek stories for you to actually sit down and watch, they would actually have to go to the Dalek version of Earth, the power of the Daleks, even though that is actually animated, Day of the Daleks, and that was something I would not have admitted about 10 years ago. So Day of the Daleks has really moved up, Day of the Daleks has really moved up into my estimate. Then, of course, you have... Genesis of the Daleks and Remembrance of the Daleks. They are the five best Dalek stories, in my opinion, ever. And, yes, Jamie, I know how much you love that. I found the original VHS. Ah, that's actually... Whoa, 20 quid. That's actually quite good for that. You should have got it, mate. Because for the original version of the... For the VHS ver... original VHS version of the Brenner Morbius, I've actually seen it go up for 400 quid. And... To be honest with you, I just kind of got this one from 1990. That's the one, I have to be honest with you. I did. I got that one. That one. I mean, if I quickly show you, I do have a few spare VHSs down here. At the side of it. So, yeah. that That's the one you're on about, aren't you, mate? The original. That's the original version of The Unearthly Child. So, yeah, I've got quite a lot of VHSs. I've got them mainly in story order. I have got a little side of my little cabinet here where I keep all my spare ones, which is basically like the main original releases or whatever, because I have got some stories, like, not once but twice properly. So, yeah, I, I, I'm actually in the middle of sorting out my VHS collection at the moment because I've got two little cabinets of VHSs. I've got one there. I've got this one at the top of it. I've just got mainly some of my Blu-rays. And then, of course... The one at the bottom is mainly all VHSs, so I am in the middle of sorting all their VHSs out. I want, they want Tomb of the Cybermen next in colour. I want it too. Yes, I really do want Tomb of the Cybermen in colour. I think for the iconic scenes where you see them coming out of the ice tombs, I think that would absolutely be amazing and absolutely fantastic and absolutely brilliant. I would love to see that in colour. What is your favourite steelbook? Ah, what's my favourite steelbook? You probably want to know, hey? So, my favourite steelbook. Now, I've got all my steelbooks along here. So, my favourite steelbook is, of course, Sparehead from Space. I just love that artwork design for Sparehead from Space. It's absolutely brilliant. I love the fact we've got Autons. I love the Earth. I love this little circle around the Autons. 
Pertwee looks absolutely amazing there, doesn't he? Look how amazing Pertwee looks and Elizabeth Layden. Not Elizabeth Layden, uh, Caroline and Caroline John. I mean, we've got that fantastic imagery of Pertwee. He looks like a Dalek's looking at him. I really do like That's my favourite steelbook design at the moment. But I have to be honest with you, my second, if I was going to say what my second favourite steelbook is. Now, this one was given to me back in May from my very good friend, Jamie F. Smith, who is in the comments. And Jamie, I'd like to, again, say thank you very much. But this is my second favourite steelbook. Series 1. I've always wanted this. It was so hard to get. And I'm glad I got it. I mean, just look how good Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper look there. Absolutely spot on. Absolutely looks amazing. And I really love... I just love that steelbook design. And, of course, I love the back as well with Bad Wolf and the TARDIS and Daleks. Uh, I absolutely do love that. Honestly, I do love it. That's that one. The Seas of Death movie version has been done on VHS. They can colorize it too. To be honest with you, mate, I haven't really seen the movie version of The Seas of Death. I haven't really seen the movie version because it's so rare to get these days. I've actually got the six-part version of it. Thank you so much, Jamie. I absolutely love that steel book. I'm so glad it's in my collection. I've now thank you for your help, mate, actually. I'm down to two steel books that I actually need for Modern Who, which is basically Series 9 and the specials. What is your favourite collection cover? Oh, now you're asking me. Oh, that's so hard. Oh, you know you have to ask. Oh. But I don't know. I honestly don't know because I just love all of the, collect all the collection artworks. I absolutely love all of them. I actually love looking at them. I know some people have had a go at me for getting... Basically, season 19, season 23, season 24, and season 26 signed. Because apparently, it ruins the artwork. But I don't think it does. I really don't think it does. I just absolutely love the artwork for all of them. For me to sit here, what my favourite one is... I'm going to probably be here for a massive video <laughs> talking about my favourite artwork of the collection range. Because I just can't pinpoint it. I just generally, generally can't. Because I just love all of the artwork. Season 2's artwork... Some people don't like it. I think it's absolutely amazing. I love seasons nine, season eight. I love all of them. Just all the artworks. Lee Biding actually does amazing work on these sets. Honestly, just pure amazing. And I just absolutely love, generally love looking at every single one of these artworks every time. That's why I love having them on my shelf like this. Like, I've only got like one gap here for the next one. But to be honest with you, this is where half of my Doctor Who DVDs would have to start finding a new home for really to find a new home for i'm getting black adder and the deep tenant doctor who on blu-ray for christmas which ones are you getting mate are you getting the 60th anniversary steelbook that's coming out at the end of the year do you think they, sh they should add the modern series into doctor who <laughs> i've already said this one but to be honest with you so i'm just kind of getting the camera Focus now. I've accidentally moved it all to show the collection. To be honest with you, I do want them to because if we're going into a whole new era of Doctor Who now, we're shooting Gatwa's Doctor, and of course, it basically 2005 to 2022, we've got series 1 to 13, and now we're getting a whole new reboot of the show. I think it's actually a good time to actually release the the first part of Modern Who in the collection range. Just call it Modern Who Phase. Modern Who Phase... Oh, sorry. That nearly fell. Modern Who Phase 1. Just, let's just call it that. Modern Who Phase 1. There we are. Modern Who Phase 1. I would love to see the first phase of Modern Who get up late like into the collection range. If I could say what I would like to be for the very first release, then I would actually like to see Series 1 first. Because I really think Series 1 might be a great way to reduce Heckleson's Doctor to new viewers. I wonder. No. Unfortunately, um, classic Doctor Who is not going to be put onto BBC iPlayer. That is only for the UK people. On Disney, not Disney Plus, sorry. I celebrate the 60th anniversary by watching my favourite story slash episode each Doctor's birthday. I'm going to listen to Sagaris. Ah! That's actually quite interesting. I used to do that, but at the moment to celebrate the big 60th anniversary, I'm watching one story per Doctor until I get to the 
13th of November when I watched The Power of the Doctor. And I'm just going to be watching little random stories afterwards. So from the 14th to the 20th, I'm just going to be watching random stories. So I did have on the 14th in my list, I was going to be watch The Daleks. But with The Daleks now being colorized, I'm going to hold that story off until basically the 25th of November when, when, that, when that comes being broadcast on BBC4. Because luckily on Thursdays, I, I actually work in the morning shift. So I have the afternoons off. So I'm going to be back home in time just for me to watch the colorization of Doctor Who the Daleks. Really looking forward to that. What villain would you like to re to return? Ah! The one villain I really do kind of want to return at the moment is literally the Axos. Now, Axos was introduced back in Season 8 in the Clause of Axos. In the Clause of Axons. I really want the return of Axos because the third Doctor did trap him inside a quantum time loop. I would like to see that time loop kind of get to say, like, kind of malfunction and stuff and crash line into modern day Earth and having Shri Gatwa's Doctor to basically defeat them. I would have loved it. It's one story I kind of wanted the 12th Doctor to have. The 12th Doctor basically re, re meets the Axons, but we never got that. So I really do kind of want the return of the Axons from the Pertwee era. Doctor Who Guide in the UK. For the UK, you can actually watch it on BBC Player. Uh, I will meet Peter Davison and Sophie Aldred next in Comic Con. Yes, they actually are amazing. They actually are amazing. I've met Davison six times. I've met Sophie Aldred once, and of course, I have met Davison. As I said, literally six times. I've met him six times, and he's a fantastic. He's a fantastic actor, and he has so he makes so much time for people. He really does make so much time for people and answers answer their questions. He does. He really does make a lot of time for people, and I think he's absolutely brilliant, an amazing actor. Sophie Aldred I've only met once, and she is absolutely lovely. She's one of the best people I've actually ever met. What is your favourite Jodie Whittaker companion? Dan. I'm sorry, John Bishop as Dan. He makes me laugh every single scene I watch him in. And that's just me saying that. I mean, every single scene, like from War of the Santorans, where the Doctor asks, asks him, how have you got into the Santorans ship with this? He goes, why, why have you got a walk to bash him on the head with? <laughs> I really love Dan. I think he's an interesting character. I want reboot Tomb of the Simon with the 15th Doctor, the 2nd Doctor and Jamie. No, I want Tomb of the Simon to stay. No reboot, no adding of another incarnation of the Doctor. Big Finish, I've done that with the fourth Doctor in Return to Terros. But I don't really want the TV to do it because I really think they might ruin that story's ambition because I actually do quite enjoy that story and I do have it in highly regards. I really do love it. It's one of my favourites. I'm going to re I'm going to rewatch Power of the Doctor I don't blame you, mate. It's a good way to rewatch that story if you're going to rewatch it before the Starburst. But I'm going to give it a rewatch on the basically the 13th because it is the only Whitaker era I actually did quite enjoy watching. I mean, series 12 and 13 have quite a few good episodes in them, but I just physically do not enjoy. I don't really enjoy the Whitaker era that much. I never say for guy. I just. Sorry to say that. I just physically don't enjoy the Whittaker era that much. I know some people love it. Some people think it might be the best part of Doctor Who. But for me, I just never got into the Whittaker era. I mean, I really think the writing suffered a lot for Jodie's Doctor. A lot of it. A lot of the writing actually did suffer. And for me to even say that, I think the writing did suffer in Series 11. Series 12 suffered a little bit. There's only a few standard episodes in Series 12. Flux... Flux was doing okay. Flux was doing okay, but I think they kind of rushed it on the last episode. What do you think of the rumours of the split regeneration at the end of the 60th anniversary? I'm hoping it's not true. I really hope it's not true. Because I don't really want another version of Ten of Tenant basically being out there. I mean, we have a version of Ten out there already. A version of Tenant basically out there on a parallel universe. I don't really want a split regeneration. I just kind of want a regeneration between the 14th Doctor and the 15th Doctor, like we have for other Doctors. I don't really want a split regeneration. I have always had people ask me this one before, but I just don't want a split regeneration. I think 
having a split regeneration does not gonna work. I just think people will not like it. Yeah, the writing wasn't great. Yeah, it's like another side of guide. The writing for the Whitaker era was terrible. I mean, some people said the 80s had bad scripts. No offense, but I kind of love the 80s a lot more than basically the Whitaker era. <laughs> I'm not, that's just me saying it here. I actually did love the 80s a lot more than the Whitaker era. I mean, yeah. If I could say the standouts for the Whitaker era for me, it's definitely got to go to Spy 4 Parts 1 and 2. Future of the Jew, The Haunting of Villa Doty, A Social of the Summon. They are the five best episodes from series 12. What is your, who is your, what is, who is that, who, is, what, oh, what is your favourite master story? Now, what do you mean by favourite master story? Because do you, do you mean like my favourite master story from each Doctor? Like my favourite master story with the third Doctor, my favourite master story from the fourth Doctor? Or do you mean in general? What is, do you mean, like, in general, what is my favourite Master st story? Because I I have quite a few Master stories. Yeah, I absolutely love the 80s, another sofa guy. I really do love the 80s. And I'm going to say this. In general. In general. So, what is my favourite Master episode? I'm going to be honest. Now, this comes from classic Doctor Who. And I'm sorry to say that. This comes from classic Doctor Who for my favourite Master story in general. And some people probably want to shoot me when I say this one. But I'm going to have to say, it's got to go to the, the Planet of Fire from Davison. Because I really think the, how the Master's there trying to get himself back to life on the gases of the Planet of Fire. I really do quite enjoy that storyline. I love the fact how we have Chameleon that can shape shift into the Master. And trying to, where the Master's trying to use Chameleon to do his bidding. And basically try to get the Master to... Renew himself by coming back into his normal size after the master basic messed around with his t tissue manipulator. So I really do like that one. And that's my it, that is my favorite master story in general of Doctor Who, Planet of Fire. George's version was a little bit rubbish. Yeah, I don't agree with that one. I think she was actually rubbish in series eleven. I wonder if us Doctor Who series will be good male or female doctors. <laughs> Another I thought you were going to say the same thing. <laughs> That's my favourite Pertwee story. That is actually my generally favourite Pertwee story. But for my favourite Doctor Master story, it has to go to the Planet of Fire because I really love the way how... I don't know how actually how to say it because I really love the way how Anthony Ailey and Peter Davidson are in that story because in most of Davidson's stories, it's very much like a panto, panto rhyme thing with... Like, if you look at Keeper Truck, uh, not Keeper Truck, and when you look at Time Flight, and you've got the master dressed as Kylie going, Shala, Shalam, Shalam, Shali. And then when you just see him knocks on the floor, and he goes, No, Doctor, you never do understand. And he takes off his disguise. You never do. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, and then of course, in The King's Demons as well, I think that the whole thing of basically, that's just basically re just ridiculous. The whole thing of the master being. In a disguise where we basically just got, we know it's going to be the master. Especially every time I rewatch the story, and I'm like, oh, it's the master. That's really bad CGI effects when, like, for the King's Demons. Yeah, but I'm going to be honest with you. The the, the Sea Devils is my favorite Pertwee story. I really do enjoy that story. I want the Cyber Leader to come back in Doctor Who from Tomb of the Summon. The Cyber Leader wasn't actually in Tomb of the Summon. That was actually the Cyber Controller. What are your favourite 12th Doctor stories? I really wish you wouldn't ask me this when another sci-fi guy is on. Because I know he don't like... I know he likes Capaldi's Doctor. But he's, he, he really, like he's, as he said in his previous videos, the Capaldi era for him is very up and down. But for me, I'm going to be 100% honest. I actually I love the Capaldi era. It's my favourite modern Who era. Because it feels so much like classic Who it feels so much like Pertwee's Doctor Who, really. I don't like Series 8 and 9 little bits, but that's because of Clara, because I don't like the way how the Doctor does become Clara's bitch. I'm sorry to say that, but I really think Clara does take the Doctor as her bitch. By the way, she threatens to slap him so hard that he will regenerate at the end of Kill the Moon and other stories. But if I was going to say what my five favourite Peter Capaldi episodes are, now, this is probably going to be a f f controversial, because this is my opinion, and these are the ones I do enjoy. I really love Deep Breath. I think Deep Breath is absolutely amazing. I really love Mummy on the Orient Express. I love Mummy on the Orient Express. It's one of my favourite episodes. Flatline's quite good. Not my personal favourite. Because it becomes more of a Clara Who. 
not Doctor Who. It just feels more like a Clara Who. Yeah, I don't really care for Flatline. I do enjoy Dark Water and Death in Heaven, even though the plot does fall flat on its face because that whole build up the Simon, with the whole build up the Simon, and then of course you just get to Dark uh, Death in Heaven, and of course it just turns out to be a plot just to give the Doctor an army. Don't really care for that. I really don't care for that plot. But the episode's quite good. For Series 9, I'm going to have to say there's only three episodes I actually quite enjoy. Which is Under the Lake, Before the Flood, and of course... I'm sorry to say that, but I'm actually going to say for for Series 9, Under the Lake and Before the Flood is absolutely amazing story for Series 9. I just absolutely love them. I just really do love them. I honestly do flat out enjoy those stories. I do like heaven sent as well heaven sent is an absolute masterpiece for capaldi the way the doctor is trapped in his convention dial and he's there running around the rooms and he's there trying to stop the veil and he comes across this diamond wall place and he's there thumping his way through i really do enjoy that i think it's absolutely amazing series 10 it's a bit hard for me to say what my episodes are my favorite episodes are for series 10 because series 10 it's my all-time favorite capaldi season series it's my all-time favorite capaldi like series because i love the pilot i love smile i love thin ice I love how the Doctor just punches that racist in the face. <laughs> I just absolutely love that one. Oxygen. I do actually quite enjoy Oxygen. Then, of course, you have Extremers, the Pyramid at the End of the World or something like that. And then, of course, you have Live the Land, the Monk Trilogy. Not so much, but it's got some good elements in there. I do enjoy Empress of Mars. And say the Ice Warriors are really good in that episode. I just absolutely love the Ice Warriors. And then, of course, we have Wonderful Time, the Doctor Falls, and Twice Upon a Time, which is absolutely amazing. I feel like Clara's story should have ended at series seven, although I love enjoy Face the Raven. I do think Clara should have left at the end of the time of the Doctor, to be honest with you. I really do think that myself. I really think that at the end of the time of the Doctor, Clara should have left because the whole point of her being there was just for the whole impossible girl situation. But when you get around to series eight and nine, she just, it just really i find clara very a little bit irksome in series eight and i find it a little bit more irksome in series nine than i do for series eight but i think that should have been matt bailey what are you wearing for comic con in the two in two weeks it's actually next week it's actually next week comic con is next saturday and i'm actually cosplaying the 11th doctor because i'm meeting alex kinston and jenna coleman for the first time so i'm quite looking forward to them what are your favorite quotes from each doctor so, what are my favourite quotes from each Doctor? So, for the first Doctor, I love that I love that quote of his from the Aztecs, where he's there saying, You cannot rewrite history, not one line. Fully me, I know. I know. I just absolutely love that that whole massive speech for the first Doctor and Barbara. I do love Charlton's line in Tomb of the Simon, where he's there talking to Vicky about families, because Vicky's only just witnessed her father get killed by Daleks, and the Doctor goes, I remember my family, but I have to really want them to. I need to really make them remember so I can see at the point of their eye. My favourite third Doctor quote is, courage isn't a matter of being, being afraid, you know. It's about being afraid, doing what you do anyway. I just love that line. I love Tom Baker's quote where he goes, do I have the right from Jess the Dykes? The fifth Doctor, I'm going to have to say my favourite quote for the fifth Doctor is from Urshock where he's there talking to the Cyberman and he goes, oh, what was it? He, he literally talks to the Cyberman and he goes, these things are really relevant. These things are like what life is all about. I just absolutely love that. Colin Baker's favourite quote, I'm going to have to say, is from Travel Time Lords, where he's there standing up to the Time Lords and he goes, In all my troubles in the universe, my battles against evil, against power, mad, cause bitters, I should have stayed here. The oldest citizen, what went degenerate and run to the core, Daleks, Antara, and Cybermen. There's still the nursery compared to us, taming years absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. I really just absolutely love that line. So that's McCoy. My favourite quote from McCoy has got to be from Survival, where he goes, There's worlds out there where the sky is burning, where the seas are asleep and the river stream. People made of smoke and cities made of song. Some of this danger, some is injustice, and some of us the tea's getting cold. Come on, Ace, we got work to do. Paul McGann, I need to listen to more big finishes before I get my favourite quote of his, but I don't know what it actually is. The Ninth Doctor, I don't really know. I, don't, I need to think about more from the modern Doctors because the modern Doctors have got some good, iconic quotes. Another segue, I would be happy if she left in Last Christmas where it was a good ending with her being old. Yeah, I did actually... I've actually forgot about that one. 
Yeah, Glass Christmas with Clara being old. Yeah, I think that should have been it. that that should have been a perfect ending, but Moffat ruined it, didn't he? Being all Moffat. What do you think of Tenet coming back? I'm actually quite looking forward to it. I'm not too keen on the tenth Doctor with the whole lovey dovey stuff, but he's playing a whole new incarnation, and I'm really looking forward to what he's going to bring into the role of the fourteenth Doctor. What is your favourite Sonic screwdriver? So my favourite Sonic. Is actually over here in toy at the moment. So my favourite Sonic screwdriver design is Pertwee's one. I absolutely love this one. And this was actually used from season 8 up to season 10. As the Doctor accidentally left it on the moon colony when he was arrested. In front of in space. But this was actually one of my favourites. Because I remember watching Doctor Who and the Sea Devils with me dad. And I remember watching that scene with him where he's there going through the mines of the Sea Devils and he's pointing at Sonic Screwdriver and the Sea Devils are there going like that and he's just running away. I do have some great iconic moments with my dad watching that story. But my favourite Sonic Screwdriver is Pertwee's. What is your favourite sermon story of all time? Mine, my one is Earthshock. Ah, I'm sorry, but mine's Earthshock as well. I think Earthshock, it is the best Cyberman episode ever. It has so much build-up with the death of Adric. And I love the Cyber Leader in that one as well, played by David Banks. David Banks is just such an iconic Cyber Leader. I really do enjoy that one. Honestly, I'll be honest with you, I do enjoy that one. So, what happened to DVD dispensation? Uh, that, I uploaded that one yesterday, mate. I did part 10 yesterday where it showed all the DVDs that you can get for season 11. So, that was yesterday. I mean, last week was... Last week, it was such a big week for Doctor Who fans because we had the announcement of Tales from the TARDIS. We had the shooty, some announcements to Shooty Gap was Doctor being announced and all that. Like, so, what is your what is the best multi-Doctor story? The Three Doctors. I'm literally just going to say that. The Three Doctors is the best one ever. Now, some people say, oh, The Five Doctors or Day of the Doctor. For me, I'm going to have to be honest with you. The Three Doctors, it is the very first one that introduces the multi-Doctor stories. We have Omega in that one, where he's trapped in, a, in his own little world of antimatter through the black hole, which is actually quite enjoyable. So, yeah, I really think the Three Doctors is the best one. I remember meeting the first, second, and third Doctors on the set. Whoa! My friend, Gary, you are a legend. I wish I was alive to see that. I wish I could have met them. It would have been so amazing. So amazing if I could have met William Hartnell and Patrick Charlton and John Pertwee. I would have, if I could have a time machine or a TARDIS, I would actually go back in time with all my heart known Trout and Pertwee DVDs for them to sign. I really would. Right, if Clara had left with 11, then 12 would have had Bill for series 8, 9, as well as 10. Yes, I really think Bill would have been so much better with Capaldi in series 8 and 9 than Clara was, but I do think Clara was more of a better companion for 11. Last week I, it was a big week for me, I was busy all week. So I couldn't enjoy it. Oh, I'm sorry uh, for that. Ten fetus milkshake. Tedious milkshake. What do you think the timers could return? Ah, uh, now I'm not too fond of what basically Chino has done to the Time Lords because I really think there is so much stuff they could have done with the Time Lords. But the fact that Chidnor's basically gone and made the Master blow up the whole of Gallifrey and they're all into Cyber Masters. I don't, I don't think we would ever see the Return of the Time Lords now. If we were going to see the Return of the Time Lords, there are some other way. I would like to see the return of some other iconic Time Lords. I'd like to see the return of Raslan since the 12th Doctor kind of booted him off the planet. I'd love to see the return of the Irani. I would love to see the return of Romana. Have Romana alive. I really have a reminder of life. I would like to see the return of Leela because the last time we actually saw Leela on screen is where basically she said goodbye to the fourth Doctor. But I mean, if they we were going to get Time Lords back, then they're going to have to do the whole massive retcon of the Timeless Child story arc, you know? Oh, the Doctor's the Timeless Child. Yeah, I think if they're going to bring up the Time Lords, they're going to have to retcon that store that whole massive story arc that's the one thing i'm going to say if they're going to bring up the time laws they're going to have to retcon all that that's the thing yeah i i know writers always finds a way but the thing is though if they were going to retcon it i think it would either be like if they say the Whitaker era never happened but we know it did but 
if the time was were to come back, I would be happy about it, but I don't want the times to come back because I really think in Modern Who the Time Lords were kind of a little bit ruined for that. I mean, I prefer the Time Lords in Classic Who. Yes, I know in Classic Who they kind of got treated like a crappy alien species after being an all-powerful race that we see at the end of the war games and then the, every time they, we saw them, they literally came defenseless in the Three Doctors. Then, of course, you got the Deadly Assassin, which is actually quite of a good story. The Invasion of Time, blah, 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 not a great story for the Time Lords because they get invaded by the Verdans and the Santarans. Then, of course, we have Arkham Infinity and the Five Doctors and, of course, Trial of the Time Lords. So, I, if the Times were to come back, I kind of want them to be like they were in the War Games, this big, massive, powerful race. I really think that might be interesting for them to do. I really think, yeah, you know what? Yeah, return the Time Lords. But if they're going to bring them back, just bring them back. What planet from Classic Who would you want to return? Ah, there are so many, so many planets I'd like to see return. I would actually like to see the return of Aldred's planet that we see in the Hand of Fear. That fantastic snowy background we see in Season 14. Imagine the Doctor regenerate, like, basically going back onto that one and basically landing back and find that Aldred is still alive from planning his revenge on the Doctor. Imagine that one. Huh? What are your thoughts on Mr. Beast getting cancelled for buildings us building wilderness in Africa? Uh, I don't actually know because I don't really pay attention to the news, unfortunately. I don't find I find the news really, really depressing and that lot, so I don't really stick around for the news. Unless it's Doctor Who news, because then uh, that's when I have, have all my new f news feeds up for news on Doctor Who content through Instagram and Facebook. I don't really care for anything else that's happening in the world because it just I just find it so depressing and stuff. There's nothing that we all can do about it, so I'll just ignore the news. Yeah, for the planets, I like to see return. So I like to see the return of the planet from the Hand of Fear. I like to see the return of. I'm gonna be honest with you. I kind of like to see the return of the planet that we see in Colony in Space with John Pertwee. Even though I don't enjoy that story, I find it a little bit boring. And the fact that when the Master pops up in part three, that's when the story does get good. I actually did quite enjoy the planet. I really, I'll be honest with you, I did actually quite enjoy the planet. I want to see them return. Or how about them? How about we had the return of, you know, the return of Metabelius 3 with the planet of the spiders. Imagine if we went back to Metabelius 3 and the big giant spider that basically killed the third Doctor radiation poison is still alive. And yeah, I would love to see that one. I'd love to see the return of Metabelius 3. Metabelius 3 return. Doctor Who News has been depressing recently. Cough, cough. I know if a child, cough, cough. Yeah, I know. I know. I really don't care for Steph, Steph Colburn. I really think he's a massive idiot and a tool. I don't really care for him. And I don't like the fact what he's done. I'm glad I got my DVD copy of that story, though. And my two VHS copies. Do you think they should bring back the Black Guardian? Yes. Yes, I do. I honestly do think they need to bring back the Black Guardian because when we last saw the Black Guardian, after he basically, he, the Tyler gave him the enlightenment and he burst into flames, and of course, the basically the White Guardian warned the Doctor that the Black Guardian would try again to kill him. And of course, it's been, what, 40 odd years since that final conflict between the Doctor and the Black Guardian. It's the time for a rematch between the two of them, don't you think? Yeah, I do honestly think it should be a massive battle between the two of them. And yeah, I do quite a few. I do think if the Black Guardian is going to return, I think it will be absolutely brilliant and absolutely amazing i'm literally gonna do it, stay on for another 10 minutes and then i'm gonna go off ladies and gentlemen and you will see me tomorrow when i do my crown jewels video tomorrow where i'll be talking about all my my basically crown jewel for season five where i'm gonna got four honorable mentions for that season season five it is my least favorite trout and season but it's actually quite good i do quite enjoy season five a little bit not as good as seasons four and six though that's just me saying that it's not as good as season four and six any more questions you'd like to ask me? What are your thoughts on David Morrissey as Jackson Lake and should he return as an official doctor? <clears throat> no, I don't think Jackson, um, David Morrissey should return as a, another doctor because I don't know what it is. I never really liked his performance that much growing up. I, I In recent years, I actually do quite enjoy that episode. But I never quite enjoyed Devin Morrissey from that episode as Jackson Lake or as the other Doctor. 
I'm sorry to say that. Do you, what do you think about Harriet Jones surviving after Stolen Earth? Well, to be honest with you, we do know she got exterminated because we do see it a little bit on camera before the camera turns off. I do think Harriet Jones is dead, dead. Unless she was going to come back and probably came back as a Cyberman in Dark Water and Death in Heaven in Series 8. I think that's the only way they could have brought her back, but they didn't. So, yeah, I'm sorry to say that. I don't think Harry Jones is ever going to come back now. I mean, I, for spin-off-wise, I think if we're going to do something, I think they could do like a little spin-off with her between the Christmas Invasion and Stolen Earth, where you see what she got up to and basically meeting Mr. Copper and helping him create the subwave network to make contact with all everybody that knows the Doctor at that point. That might be quite good, and I might have an interesting story. Yeah, Jackson Lake, no, no, I don't want to see him return, I really don't. I think Jackson Lake was an actually boring character. He's not as iconic. When I thought he was actually going to be a future incarnation of the Doctor, I thought, ooh, this might be interesting, but no. I like Morrissey, I thought he was the Doctor, when he thought he was the Doctor, but once he realised he was Jackson Lake, he, yeah, he did, he actually did. He did. Hey, do you like Star Wars? Yes, I do. I do like Star Wars, but to be honest with you, I'm more of a Doctor Who and Star Trek fan than a Star Wars fan. And to be honest with you, I have upset one of my work colleagues last week when I went to work dressed as a Starfleet officer because he's a Star Wars fan. And he said he didn't like some of the ship's design when he watched. And then he, the way he described to me, it was the Connie Enterprise from the TOS Enterprise. And I said... You need to watch TNG and onwards because that's when Star Trek gets good. Yeah, Star Trek gets good at that point. But yeah, I do like Star Wars. The Three Doctors is my favourite. I'm so glad somebody else has said that because I absolutely love The Three Doctors. It is my favourite multi-doctor story. Some people say, oh, The Five Doctors or Death of the Doctor, but for, I actually do quite enjoy The Three Doctors a hell of a lot more than The Five and Death of the, Do Death of the Doctor. I mean... I was so glad when season 10 came out in the collection range back in 2019 because it meant we had the three doctors in HD. And I still love rewatching that story every time I watch it in HD because I think it's absolutely brilliant. I like Mr. Olive's character. You never believe me, woman. Is supper ready? That's <laughs> such a good way for a cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, that's such a good cliffhanger. Where have you been, Olive? Well, you never believe me, woman. <laughs> you never believe me woman is supper ready that's such a broke answer <laughs> oh, such a broke answer I do like Pertwee and Troughton as well look Joe it's all quite simple I and he and he is me what oh I see you both times no we're not we're not time lords we're not just time lords we're the same time lords oh please you're just confusing the, my assistant look Joe it's all quite simple I and he and he is me <laughs> I really love that line I really love that line. I love Triton and Pertwee. They get together. I really like them as well in the Five Docs bit where he ends up saying goodbye to Tr um, Pert when he goes, Fancy Pants, Scarecrow. <laughs> I, really love I just absolutely love those two chemistry together. They're absolutely brilliant. Could you see a regenerated Susan come back as a companion? If they were going to bring back Susan, I think it would have been a perfect time for the 50th anniversary. But... As of this point in time, no. I don't think it's a good time to bring Susan back. Yeah, I mean, the last time we did see her was in the 20th anniversary of the Five Doctor story for the AKA the Five Doctors. But I think Susan... I think bringing Susan back would probably not be a great way because some people don't know who Susan is. This is the whole thing with Classic Who being on BBC iPlayer, which is one thing I think that people can go back and rewatch. Hartnell stories and Troughton stories and watch every single one of those characters, which I love. The Three Doctors is my favourite Pertwee story. I'm going to be honest with you. It's my third favourite Pertwee story, The Three Doctors is. I would have tried to put it in first place, but I just quite enjoy my second and first places for Pertwee more, which is my all-time favourite story is, of course, The Sea Devils for Pertwee. And my second favourite is Spearhead from Space. They're the ones I actually do quite enjoy a lot of. I really love Spearhead from Space. Honestly, fantastic. Would you like to? Would you like an alien companions? Yes, I think that modern Doctor Who should really have an alien companion. The fact that basically the only alien companion we've actually ever had was Nardole, 
<laughs> Nardo, and some people didn't really like him that much. I think because the one good thing about Classic Who is the Doctor travelled around with not just humans, but they travelled with aliens and they travelled with robots. Modern Who's mainly just a normal modern day Earthling, so I really think a alien companion could actually work. Especially now it's gone into, like, if Disney's having up with the budget. Yes, I know, mate. Per Inferno is your favourite Pertwee story. I do understand why, but unfortunately, it is my fourth favourite Pertwee story. And I'm sorry to say that. I honestly, I'm being honest here, but I think it's my... It is actually fourth favourite, because I just enjoy the three Doctors over it. I do enjoy Spare from Space over it. And I do enjoy the Sea Devils over it as well. But if I was going to say what my favourite Pertwee season was, then it's definitely going to be season 10. Season 7, next. I do enjoy Season 7 and 10. The, the best two Pertwee stories. If Season 7 ever comes out on Doctor Who, the collection range, I will be actually be jumping for joy because it means we get to see Sparehead from Space and Inferno. Hey. My sister got married in the castle. That was featured. That was featured in the Time Warrior. Really? What is it like? What is that, what is that castle actually like? It's I. It, that's such a great one. That's such a great one. What is your favourite Peter Davison story? My favourite Peter Davison story has changed a lot. It was the case of Androsani, but in recent rewatches, including Doctor Who, their collection, season 20, my favourite Davison story has got to go to the five Doctors. I just absolutely love it, especially when you watch all three versions all in one day. When you watch the 1983 version, when you watch the 1995 version, and the 2023 version. Watching all three versions in one day. Absolutely brilliant. That was the best day I ever spent. And when this box set came out back in September, I actually took a week off holiday. I took a week off work as a holiday. And I literally spent a whole day watching the five Doctors back to back to back. All three of the specials, the... 1983, 1995, and the 23 version. That was, the, that was my biggest achievement for that day. Four favourite isn't bad out of 24 stories. To be honest, mate, I really do enjoy Pertwee's era. Um, for a Doctor who is actually my seventh favourite Doctor, he's got some cracking stories. And for my top five Pertwee stories, it has to be, literally for my top five Pertwee stories, it has to be basically in fifth place, Day of the Daleks, because Day of the Daleks has really moved up this year quite a lot in my estimates. I never used to like it, but since I rewatched it all in Doctor Who Collection Season 9 back in March, April time and a little bit of May, I actually have grown to appreciate Day of the Daleks a lot more. I need to give it another rewatch, actually. I'm actually watching that on the 14th after I've watched Power of the Doctor, because I'm in the middle of doing my Doctor Who rewatches where I'm watching one story from each Doctor. I mean, remember the Darks is next later on, and then of course tomorrow's the TV movie. So I think when it gets to the 14th of November, I'll probably give Dare the Darks a rewatch. Have you seen the documentary? Yes. Have I seen the documentary for Adventure in Space and Time? Yes. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I actually own two copies of it. So I own it in this little copy, aka the 50th anniversary steel book that it is available in. And also, early this year, I managed to pick up the original collector's edition of it as well in Blu-ray. So I do own two copies of an adventure in space and time. And I actually do love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I think it is. The updated effects and the new dialect voices really helped out. Yes, that's the one thing. I never like the original version of Day of the Daleks. I really think the original version wasn't as good as it could have been. I think it could have been so much better, but the updated effects is just absolutely brilliant and absolutely amazing and just pure fantastic. Honestly, it's just just pure. Just pure and brilliancy. I love it. So, yeah, for your question, have I seen the documentary for Adventure Space and Time? Yes, I've actually owned it twice. I mean, I own quite a lot of Doctor Who merchandise. <laughs> as somebody asked me before, um, Scott, Am I worried about running out of space for my Doctor Who collection? To be honest with you, yes, I am, because I've got that much Doctor Who stuff. I mean, I might end up having to hide, like, some of my VHSs behind some of my Doctor Who figure collections and other and other bits, because I've got that much of it. I've got that much Doctor Who collection. It's unbelievable. I mean, at the side of me, because I've got me little shelf here full of DVDs. As you can see, you've got my fantastic collection range. You've got the Steelbooks here. You've got, of course, you've got 
the modern who box sets and then down here i've got the blu-rays standard blu-rays and then i've got the vhs's in this little cabinet here which i do need to sort through because i am in the middle of watching one on vhs at the moment but i kind of took it out and put it down here for the moment because i was actually in the middle of watching the invasion because i've got that one what time is it sorry time time to time to see what the time is i would probably stay on for another 10 minutes or so yeah another 10 minutes because i'm actually quite enjoying this live stream and you all have been absolutely amazing all of you i love all the questions you've been asking me and everything so if you've got anything else you'd like to ask me ask away i'm actually going to stay on for another 10 minutes i mean this video is actually going to be like a two hour thing of what it's supposed to be but oh well i actually quite enjoy it yeah my favorite davis story has got to go to the five doctors i think it's absolutely cracking of a story what is your favorite animation classic this one my friend this one this is my favorite i don't know why but it is it's actually my favorite honestly just pure amazing i love the animation for it i love the fact we have like an an updated version a special edition version of it as well i wish this had a steelbook release but i can't be a beggar and a chooser can i can't really be a beggar and a chooser what are your favorite doctor who figures <sighs> you got to ask me that one. <laughs> uh, my favourite Doctor Who figures. Uh, I'm literally just looking around my room, saying what I can actually say. But at the moment, it's actually hard because I own quite a lot of figures, as you can see. I mean, the back of here, I've literally got season one down to season seven because I actually made a custom figure of Pertwee in Charlton's clothing from Spare from Space, we just seen kind of collapse outside the TARDIS. The behind me, you see season one to a little bit of season seven, because there ain't that many figures for season seven. And then the Watford side of me is basically seasons eight to eleven. Then on one side of my chest of drawer, I've actually got seasons twelve to eighteen on figures. Then I got season nineteen to season twenty-one on on the other kind of shelving unit. Or, so I say, cabinet. And then I've got a big massive shelf unit where I've basically put seasons 22 down to 26. And then, of course, the big finished figures that we had from B&M a couple of years ago, like the the 7th Doctor set, the 8th Doctor set, and the ninth, and the War Doctor set. And then, of course, on the shelf below them, I literally have Series 1 on two different shelves. And Series 2 on two different shelves. And then Series 3 all on one shelf and then in, in my cabinet over the other side of my room i've literally got series four then i've got five and six together and then i've got eight nine from series seven sorry down to series 13 and then i've got a little shelf section from where i made a little display section for the power of the doctor so it's a bit hard for me to say what my favorite figures are because i just love all of them but I actually cannot think from the top of my head what for me to say is my favourite because there's so many great ones. Was that my power is my favourite too? Yeah, Power of the Daleks. It's I know it's the very first proper animation we had for this, but it is my favourite animation because I I just absolutely love that story. I actually love it more than I actually thought I would have done. And yeah, I love the Steelbook too. If we had another Steelbook version of it, but if they actually included the special edition. I think I would love that one as myself. I mean, for my steel books, I've actually still got in the collection my Sharda steel book. Some people have got rid of their copies because of it being in Doctor of the Collection season 17. But there is a reason why I have kept on to the steel book. And the reason of that is, is just because of the 2003 version of Sharda with Paul McGann. Because it means Paul McGann, I've literally got like two DVDs, two Blu-rays of Paul McGann stories on. Yes, it's one of them's in the Tom Baker set and the other one is actually in the TV movie with Night of the Doctor. But I do enjoy the 2003 version of Sharda. And that is me going to be off. I'm hoping everybody has enjoyed this fantastic live stream. This live stream has absolutely been amazing. I, 
I think I will probably do a next one in a couple of weeks. Eh? I got my Shard of Steel book two. It was a gift from a subscriber. That's actually awesome. Yeah, I think I remember you unboxing that one. I do think I do remember you unboxing that one. Unfortunately, I, my one I've had since 2017. <laughs> I remember when I went to HMV to get that, which is a shop over here in the UK, mate. And they were actually watching me because I went to the DVDs, ran up to the Blu-rays, back down to the DVDs, because I couldn't make my mind up to buy the DVD or the Blu-ray version. So I ended up buying the, the Blu-ray version first and then basically went back a few weeks later and got the DVD of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to everybody. You all have been absolutely amazing and absolutely brilliant. The live streams can get away. <laughs> yeah, they can. <laughs> I actually quite enjoyed this one because this it wasn't supposed to be as long as it should have been. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. It's actually longer than it should have been. If one of the doctors showed up at your house unexpected, which doctor would you like it to be? The fourth doctor. I, I just want the fourth doctor. He's my favourite doctor. I would love to travel with the fourth doctor. Um, I will probably do another live stream. Now, last time I did one of these was over a year ago. And I don't know why it's been this long for me to do a live stream, but... I actually quite enjoy this one, so there's going to definitely be another one coming up soon. Probably, if I'd probably run about December, where I talk about maybe the 10th of December, where we've just finished watching the 60th anniversary specials, which is aka the Star Beast, Wild Blue Yonder, and The Giggle. And I'll probably do a big massive review on them on my live stream. So thank you for watching. Please do. As you all know, like, subscribe and share. And let me know in the comments, what are your favourite Doctor Who stories and what topic would you like me to discuss for you? Thank you for watching and thank you for being magnificent, amazing people. And have a cracking day tomorrow, you amazing lot.